Alex with Shoreline Marine Products. I've been a certified marine mechanic for over 25 years and I'm here today as Captain Weekend. Today I'm going to share a variety of easy boating projects that you can do yourself with the common tools that you've probably got in your toolbox right now. I'll be by your side every step of the way and together we'll install a variety of top quality Shoreline Marine Products to get you back on the water faster. So let's get going. Grab your tools and I'll share my tips and tricks so you can easily install those new hot shoreline accessory and replacement parts and be your own Captain Weekend. Hey guys, it's Loy, Captain Weekend with Shoreline Marine. We're at the ramp today and uh, I thought I would show you guys exactly how I do things to keep from clogging up the ramp. I always get my boat set up before I get in line to launch. That way I don't get to the top of the ramp and have to hold the whole line of traffic up behind me to get all my stuff ready to get into the water. So I thought I'd show you guys how to do all of that stuff. First thing I always do when I get out of the truck is I come back to my trailer lights, disconnect them. That takes all the power away from my trailer. That way I don't have to worry about any corrosion building up on my lights, makes them last a whole lot longer. Next thing I do is I'm walking down the side of the boat. So I'll reach in, check all my hatches, make sure they're secure so that when I get in the water and start to take off, I don't have thing, hatches blowing open and things blowing out of the boat. Next thing I do is I come around the left side of the boat is I'll go ahead and take my left tie down off. And then I make sure that I put my plug in. Don't want it to sink on the trailer. Now that I got my plug in, I'll go ahead and take my motor toter off. Make sure my prop's secure. Just kind of look over the bottom of the motor, make sure everything's good there. Make sure my right tie down's off. That's all good. Then I'll walk up the right side of my boat. Make sure my key's in the ignition. That way when I get to the top of the ramp and get ready to get into the boat, I don't have to go run back up to the truck and grab my keys off the console or in the console or wherever I happen to put them. And go from there, I'm ready to get in line now. Haven't blocked anybody from getting in that's ready and wasted a bunch of time on the top of the ramp holding everybody up. I can get in the water and back out, makes for a happy ramp. Okay, we're at the top of the ramp now. Everybody's cleared out, we're ready to go in. I've already got my partner in the boat. He's ready to get it off the trailer once we get in there. He's got the bulb primed up. I'm gonna pull on through here and get as straight as I can to the ramp. Now when I'm backing up, I've done it for quite a while, so I have my own bad habits and everything else, but if you're not sure of how you're going to back up or how to back up, you want to put your hand on the bottom of the wheel and whichever way you want the trailer to go is the way you move the wheel. And then that'll line you up straight. You want to be as straight as you can when you start, so you have to make minor adjustments and you don't want to make big adjustments with your trailer because by the time the adjustment takes effect on the trailer, you're going to be way over adjusted. Also, you want to back as close to the edge of the ramp as possible. That way, in case it's a wide enough ramp to get two boats, you'll have enough room for another boat to get in there and you're not taking up the whole ramp. Now that I've got the boat over the water, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect my rope or strap and I'll be ready to put the boat in the water. One thing you do not want to do is if you have a roller trailer, you want to make sure the boat is in the water and actually almost floating before you disconnect it because as soon as you let off on that strap, that boat's going to take off down the ramp and be in the water if you have a roller trailer. Now we're ready to go on into the water. I'll back up a little bit so that my partner can go ahead and fire the boat up. Once I make sure it's running, I'll go ahead and launch him. And now I can go ahead and park my truck and trailer, 
clear the ramp so the next person can go on and everybody's good. All right, we've been out enjoying the lake all day, ready to load our boat back up. I'm gonna back it in, again, staying as close to one side of the ramp as I can to allow room for anybody else to come in. And then when I back up my trailer, most trailers are like this. You might have to adjust to your boat, but if you stop with about four inches of fender showing, the top of the fender basically, you'll be about the right depth. Once you get to that point, you're ready for your partner to pull the boat up onto the trailer. Never get in front of the boat when he's pulling it up on the trailer in case something happens. Then if you got shoes on, you can climb up on your bumper, walk right down to your trailer. Hook to your bow eye. And then winch it on. Make sure you're good and snug and you're ready to go. Make sure your partner tilts the motor up so that you don't drag the skeg of the motor off. And you're ready to go from there. Okay. Got the boat on the trailer, we've cleared the ramp, that way anybody else is ready to pull out, has full access to the ramp, we're not blocking anything up. One thing we want to do, tilt our motor all the way down. That'll let all the water drain out of the exhaust system. Go ahead and pull our plug while we're here. Put our straps on. All the water's out. We can raise it back up. Put our transom support on. Make sure our other tie, wrap, tie strap's on, and then we're ready to go. Thanks. Wanted to go over a couple of things with you on selecting a motor transom bracket. A uh, couple of different models that we have. This one is a nice heavy duty. It's got aluminum sides on it with two feet on each side to hold onto your motor. And then we have one that's all rubber. It's actually got shock absorbers in it also, which will allow, it, allow your motor to give a little bit. Biggest reason for having these things is to keep all the pressure off your transom when you're bouncing around down the road, hitting potholes and railroad tracks. With the motor tilted up like this, it puts a lot of leverage on the, on the transom and over time it will actually weaken your transom. We're gonna show you how to hook this one up today. Uh, it comes with both a bracket for a straight rear bar on your trailer or it has a hook on it in case you have a roller on the back. If it's got a, just a straight bar, you'll have to drill a hole to mount this onto and then you'll be able to hook the bracket straight up onto it. When it comes in the package, you'll see that the hooks all line up. You'll have to have these things at 90 degrees apart real easy. Just pull it apart, turn it 90 degrees, slide it back in. and then put your pin back in it. And then you're ready to mount it. Hook it over the roller, bring it up, hit your trim button, and then you just wanna go down snug. You don't wanna put a whole bunch of pressure against the roller because that'll actually bend your roller shaft and not allow your roller to turn. Then you take your bungee cord, Hook it in the hole around your gear housing on the hole on the other side. That'll secure the bracket to it, and then you're ready to go on down the road. <laughs>